With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together, discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. Welcome to the Exploring More podcast. Today we're wrapping up this series with part four of our four-part interview with myself and Jim Ramos of the Man Card podcast around the book, The Heart of a Warrior. Michael, I like to pretend I'm having coffee with a guy, just two guys having coffee. My question for this is, so let's say I were to, and I did receive, and uh, and I uh, thank you for the invitation to come to one of your Zoe uh, weekends. So let's say I come to a Zoe weekend for men. What is that called? An encounter, Heart of a Warrior encounter. Okay, so what is the cost for a weekend? 300 bucks. And that's a Friday night, Saturday Thursday, day? Thurs- Thursday night. Oh, and it ends when? Sunday, Sunday uh late morning lunch. Oh gosh. So it's a, it's extended weekend. Yeah. Okay. So what are some, just give me a couple things that go on during that weekend. Do you have a guest speaker? Do you have a worship man? Do you have a lot of silent solitude? What, what goes on there? Yeah. Great question. We do that extra day, that three and a half days, because we found over time that it takes an extra day for men to unplug from the matrix. Yep. And so uh, to just kind of find third gear again, to slow things down. Um, so that's why we start Thursday at dinner and, and run through travel days, Thursday, especially, and more and more, I mean, guys are coming around from all over the country. So we're having to deal with flights and things like that and maybe delays and stuff. So anyway, but mostly because it takes several sessions to lay that out. So we have about 10 sessions through the weekend, Oh wow! a couple in the, a couple in the morning, one in the afternoon after about four hours of free time, because boys need to play. So we, we have a playground and recess, yeah. uh, young life camps are great for that. Yep. I mean, we shoot, yep. we shoot stuff, we fish, we hike, we, we take naps, you know, we do all the stuff that guys need to do in the, in the afternoon that they don't maybe get to do day to day. So after the session, it's about a 50 minute session that we do a sharing and teaching and guiding. Uh, and, and they're, they're our team. It's, it's our friendships. Um, it's, it's walking with God together as friends and discovering the truths and the, experiences and encounters of the weekend, I mean, in our lives, and we share those during the weekend. So, you know, it's not speakers brought in or all-star teams. And, uh, you know, most of us won't be known until that weekend, you know, and that's, and, and so, but we're, we're every guy, you know, we're, we're on this journey, uh, as, and maybe a a little further down the, the road, but so after a session, then men are released for some time, we call it time alone with God, where we give them three, maybe four questions at the end of our session to go be with God. Uh, we found that small groups aren't the best because kind of the talkers talk and the hiders hide. And mm-hmm. so really, and, and that men need God more than they need each other. Yeah, They need to hear the father more than they need to have somebody else kind of hijack in a group or not, you know, uh, the, the concern of sharing, you know, what their stuff with, with a group of guys. So we don't do that at, at this particular weekend, I mean, the novelty of it for me the first time was, wait, I'm going to go ask God some questions. That's not, I've never done that. That doesn't, how do you do that? You know, I mean, m- again, my view of God was pretty, and I, we yeah. put that in the book, I, yeah. how I saw God, I, you kind of fill out your order and you slip it under the, under the door and hope he'll take care of a few things. Yeah. And then, you know, you submit another form tomorrow versus asking him questions because I felt like if I did, God was mad at me and I'm the problem. And that, uh, you know, what I, I knew, I knew the principle of unconditional love, but that wasn't my personal theology. Uh, yeah, so yeah, much yeah. of per- the performance life teaches us that it's conditional and based on what you do and how you do it. So men, you know, men begin to, we, we try to teach model and invite men to, to get into conversation with God. And, and a journal and, and a few questions and a pen. And, and then he does the, he does the wildest things God does in their lives over those weekends. 
Well, that's cool. I appreciate you sharing that. I, I, I was just curious, like what goes on at yeah. this thing? Every weekend's different. And so yeah. I want to move into, uh, and I, gosh, I'm kind of concerned about time, even though we got about 30 minutes still, but there's a couple things I really want to unpack. And the first thing is I'm just calling it BW2 at TS basic warrior training school. So you talk uh-huh. about this, a uh, warrior training and you list seven things. And so I'm just going to read them and just ask you to just in one or two sentences define okay. what this is. Cause I think this was really, really good stuff. And I might do an equipping in 10. So we do an interview format and then we do equipping format. I've already done two equipping formats on nothing to prove, nothing to hide, nothing to fear. And the other one was, uh, what was the other one? The oriented man. So I've already done two stuff out, two things yeah. out of your book. I might do this one as well. I am going to do one on loving your wife and the things she needs from later in your book, but, but yeah. let, that way the guys can really digest what's going on and go pick it up and, and do what they need to do with the book. But let's break this down. The seven basic warrior training school principles. The first one, and I'll just say it and you just explain it in one or two sentences, staying connected to the King. Yeah. Vine and branches connected. Yep. Intimacy, intimacy, Vo- uh, you know, God's, God's voice, being able to hear him and, 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 and know his presence. I mean, he's with us. Do we know it? Yeah. How's he with us? And, and so, yeah, connected to the King is, is ground zero. Absolutely. Pursuing God. Yeah, absolutely. So number two, fighting for freedom. Yeah. Freedom is the offer. Then, uh, then, then freedom will be won and, uh, hard fought and in, engaging in that. I mean, fr- it, you talked about Satan. Freedom is going to be threatened. Yeah. Once you get free and, and more free from what's happened and the lies that the enemy spun around you, then then the adventure becomes staying free. Don't don't get don't make any new agreements. You know, don't align <laughs> yeah. don't align with the kingdom of darkness anymore. Yeah. So you'll have to fight. You'll have to fight some battles. You know, it's interesting. I told I, was, I had this study last night with these fourteen men under thirty, and we were, I was telling them, you know, at your age, you know, a lot of you have just got out of the house. You have freedom, and you're defining freedom as a young man as the ability to do whatever you want. And I told right. them that's not freedom. In my in my understanding, freedom is the ability to say no to whatever yeah. I want. And their yeah. eyes kind of popped open. I'm like, because what happens is when you have the freedom of, good. and this ability to do whatever you want, you tend to go into bondage. You go into the pig pen, and you get into bondage, and you got to be really careful to. So the question for me in my own personal journey is, what are the things out there that I can't resist? Or who are the people out there that I can't resist gossiping about, slandering? Because yeah. you know, I may be in bondage to those people. Okay, I love, I love, I love freedom. Number three, seen with the eyes of your heart. Yeah, one word, man. Um, <laughs> well, you talked about it earlier, that you become oriented. You, you know that there's a spiritual realm. It exists. It's not far, far away. And so you're looking you're looking for the packages God's delivering. You're you're listening with the ears of your heart. You're listening for His voice, instruction, and you can't hardly describe it until you've encountered it. But it, that moment when you're driving in your truck, and and He says, "I, I want you to give I want you to give ten dollars to that that guy on the corner." Now I don't give ten dollars to every guy on the corner, but I'm but when He tells me because yeah, I know totally. His voice to to do that, I do that. Or, or to give a book away, or, you know, I mean, to give resources away, to be warned about uh, preemptively, to be warned, you know, it shouldn't always be game film after what you did wrong. Yeah, totally. I mean, what, is it to, what is it to have instruction and guidance going in? Yeah. And that's that's a powerful thing. So seeing and hearing with the eyes and ears of your heart. And, and this there's a whole lot in the book, you know, about the heart. We wanted to really define that biblically yeah. um, and, and make sure that, that men understand that your heart's not wicked in the kingdom as a believer. You've got a new heart and yeah. he's inviting you to live from it. You have the equipment to live this life. So you're going to need to see and hear with this equipment, this heart that he's entrusted to you, a new heart. Yeah. And that it, and that it is bent towards him. And it's the false self that's bent the other way and identifying when the false self is speaking, like you were saying uh, earlier, yeah. I mean, we, we're, we're not very discerning as kingdom men, and and that has to be. I'd say so. Let me change my word. That's a long, long. I've answer got a, I've got a word, word I'm thinking right now, but I'm going to let discernment. you discernment. Oh, okay. Discernment. Seeing I, with the eyes of your heart, hearing with the ears of your heart. That's discernment. Being a discerning man. I was yeah. going to say, experiencing God on the macro 
instead of the micro. Same thing. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, so number yeah. four, you start your phrases as you, we get lower down here, they get more and more, uh, I'm going to use the word complex. I'm getting curious mm. about some of these answers because I know what you're saying, but I go, why did he pair these words together? You know, I think like when I read an author, because I'm an author, I think, why did they, why? What's the why behind this? And so okay. the, this fourth one was pretty self-explanatory, listening and patience. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, those are, those are skills of a warrior. You know, you don't come charging in. You're, you're assessing, assessment, kind of discernment again. Mm -hmm. You're listening. You're listening for God's voice. You're listening to what the person is saying across from you. And yeah, how, how does patience play into that mm -hmm. is that you need patience in order to listen. Yep. And you can practice that skill with your kids. I promise you, they'll give you plenty of opportunities to practice <laughs> patience and listening. And, and what are they saying that's true and untrue? I mean, you can hear, as you get trained, you're going to start hearing the compromising things that, that even, I, I was with, we were with a couple um, just the other day uh, in, in, a, in a conversation counseling, and she said, I hate myself. I hate myself. I was like, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't say that. What, what, what makes you say that? Mm. And so I'm, I'm listening and, and, and I'm realizing she's making, you, you said earlier, steal, kill, and destroy. What yeah. is it that the enemy is whispering to her? That now she's the one whispering it. Yeah, he has he has some control now. Yeah, because she believes that and Correct. is communicating that. We want that off of her. We want that out of her. We want that. We want to. We want to bring remedy to that kind of. So listening and patience. That's a practical way. Not my favorite word, practical, but that's a practical way to see some, something happening in front of you and around you, micro and macro. Well, another thing too, Michael is is uh, as I was a youth pastor for almost three decades. And, and I'd love to, the answers when I'd ask students, what is prayer? And they all say the same wrong answer, talking to God. To God. And I'm like, that's the wrong answer. And they're like, what do you mean that's the wrong answer? I said, mm -hmm. I define prayer as a turn and focus on God, because I would say at least two, uh, you know, the, the, with your two ears, you should listen twice as much <laughs> as you speak. And so yeah. we, it's a turn to God. And when I turn to God, I'm not talking to God. I'm having him talk to me. But we yeah. again, it's our culture, right? Talk, 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 American, American, American. Instead of saying, just yeah. wait, why doesn't God talk to you? Why doesn't God talk to me? Well, do you listen? Or are right. you making your Christmas list for Santa and hand it over to him? You know, like right. you had said, slide it under the door and hope the annoyed yeah. old man will listen to a couple of your requests. Place, and place so, your order. Yep, mm -hmm. place your order. G Santa Claus in heaven. Okay. And so the next one, now this one really, the next two, I, I go, man, I got to ask about these two. Because I, I just thought the pairing of this was so interesting. Number five is solitude and cunning. Yeah. I think the you could, you know, four and five could be switched in terms of they're not linear, but okay, you, yeah, I didn't take it that G, way. No, but you got to get away. You have to, you have to, you know, you, you've got to find quiet. I, I remember this quote; I never forget it. That that when I am busy, the Father is quiet. Ooh. And so, busyness is such a four-letter word for the kingdom man. And so, solitude is where we get our instructions to enter into the story and fight well for freedom. So there's a cunning I gotcha. and, and the, and the father instructs us in solitude. So we saw Jesus, Jesus getting away. He, he got away all the time. If he wasn't around the campfire, the disciples like he's around here somewhere because he, he's, he's, he's meeting with the father. So curious they became was tell us how to pray. Teach us how to do what you do. And he showed him the elementary style of yeah. prayer, yeah. The, the Lord's prayer. That's yeah. the elementary prayer. John 17 is the big boy prayer. <laughs> but but this is this is the this yeah. is the first grade, second grade, third grade prayer. Pray like this. That was what they needed to hear. We need to graduate, right, Jim, to to John 17. That's how Jesus prayed. Oh, and it's got the good. enemy in the, it's got the enemy in there. It's got it's got the Father, Son, and Spirit in there, the Trinity. I mean, it's a powerful growing up, you know. So we and yes, we should recite the fundamentals of, of the Lord's Prayer. I'm not saying we shouldn't, but but anyway, solitude and cunning. I think a, I think a warrior has got to be cunning. You you have to know, like Jason Bourne, the enemy's out there. They're after you. Yeah. And they're and they're coming to steal, kill, and destroy. How? Why? When? Why do they think they can offer me that lure? Why do they believe that that I'll succumb to that temptation? Because you know how temptation works. It's an idea. Yeah, it's just it's a suggestion. It's an idea, and then when you bite it, it's going to bite you back, and have a hold of you until you 
no, I think come to that place where you'll remedy that with God. Yeah. And, um, so anyway, solitude and cunning. I, lo- I love the word, word the cunning. Kingdom. I love that word. I think of strategy. I, I think of this. I think of this. I hear this all the time, and it annoys me. Oh, Jim, can we meet together? Can we meet? I know you're busy, but... And I always correct him based on John 10.10 10 and Zoe. And I say, yeah, uh, I don't like to use the word busy. To me, that's a sin. I lived, I have a full life I live. Full life, amen. And I have a hey, full a life, but I want to fit you into my life because you and me having coffee make my life even richer and fuller. Yeah. But when I when I am busy, I have to go, okay, God, I, I repent, yeah. forgive me. I thought when I was a young man, though, hey... Younger spiritually, younger chronologically. I thought busy was the coolest thing ever. The busier you are, the more successful you are. And I, and I looked at Jesus and I realized, mm-hmm. in fact, my grandpa Ramos, full-blooded Portuguese guy, said to me this. I mean, us Portuguese were fast talkers. He said, a real man, a real man, eats fast, talk fast, works fast, and wow. carries a pocket knife, which I always carry the pocket knife. <laughs> yeah. But I realized I had been sold a false narrative from a man I respect more than any other and I realized that when I compared my grandpa's eat fast, talk fast, work fast to Jesus, he did none of those things. Yeah. <laughs> he would have been yeah. called lazy in America. In America, we would probably reject him as lazy. Yeah. He wasn't in a hurry. No. Nope. And I think, I think cunning is Jesus. I really, he said things to people that were so astonishing. And, and he could say it in the same crowd. He, he would have a word for the Pharisees, and then he could turn to the woman caught in adultery where are your accusers? Yeah. I mean, those are cunning and, and appropriate, appropriate words at, for the appropriate person and audience. I mean, he just, so I, I associate cunning with Jesus now, and I didn't used to. Let's take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more of the interview with the Man Card podcast. Hey, do you love audiobooks? If you're listening to the Exploring More podcast, then you might love the new Heart of Aware audiobook. Becoming a beloved son and entering into the healing and training God is offering his warrior men is a wonderful and critical journey, and now it's available on audio. You can find it on our website as CDs or a downloadable MP3 and start your audio version of The Heart of a Warrior right away. For our friends and allies who are on Audible and all the other audiobook platforms, look for The Heart of a Warrior. Start your orientation today. Become a man who knows who he is, where he is, and the good that God is up to in his life through the Heart of a Warrior audiobook. Let's jump back into our interview with the Man Card podcast. Okay, so how about number six, moving and glory? Yeah, the the glory piece, so he's he's moving us. What God is doing is restoring restoring everything. He's restoring the earth. He's restoring his people. He's restoring you. So that this restoration that's going on in the midst of this battle, there's a movement, there's progression. And the movement that he wants to work in your life and in my life is to our glory. What, how do we bear his image? What's the unique glory, small g? If you're an image bearer, small g glory that you bring to the larger story that's been compromised, that's been marred. That's what the enemy doesn't want is for you to walk in your God-given glory. And this is uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18, with ever-increasing glory. You know, mm-hmm. the whole Moses looking in the, mm-hmm. and veiled, and, and, and that we, as new creations, you right, we're being uh, and becoming more and more like him in ever-increasing glory, that that's the work of God in a, in a man's life. That's the Father's work mm-hmm. and what Jesus did to enable that work and that what the Holy Spirit is doing to instill and, and, and see that movement in a man's life. So if we can get in line with what God's doing in our lives and in the world, that's what we're up to with mo- with moving in uh, in glory. Yeah, and I see that also as saying God I don't want there's there's this weird false false self poser humility that says, "Oh, I don't want anybody to know about anything about me. I don't want anybody to know my name. I want to be anonymous." And I just call that a sin. Of it's a yeah. sin of pride because a yeah. humble man says, "God, put me on display." And yeah. I promise God, I will give you the glory, right? For yours is the kingdom, make me a kingdom man, and the power, and do me with power, and the glory. Yeah. God, I will give you the glory for everything that you've done in my life when you put me on display. The problem is when that guy gets put on display and then says, man, I am pretty awesome. He has a Nebuchadnezzar moment, right? He's out there yeah. chewing on grass and and growing long hair with a dew all over him. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I'm talking well, about not... <laughs> 
So, yeah. or he goes, or he goes the other way with a false humility. You yeah. Know, that whole, that whole, no, no, it's not me. It's all God. And, and I'm not saying take credit, but there's a partnership. Yeah. You know, there's an alliance between the father and me, and he's going to put me in situations where I can bring the kingdom, where I can, I can, uh, you know, I can, I can protect, I can raise my shield and sword. And when somebody recognizes that, and says, man, Jim, I love what you said. I love what you did. Really the best, the kingdom man response is, hey, thank you. Yeah. God and I have been, God and I have been working on that. And I'm so glad that was helpful. Rather, no, 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 it's all, it's all God. Well, yeah, it is all about God. But on the other side of the coin, he makes it all about us and he wants to share. He wants to share his power and authority with us. And, and we know where it comes from as warriors. And so, yeah, we, we enter into the, into the challenges and into the, into the fray, into the battle. And, uh, and we come to him over and over again with, with our hearts and with instruction, asking for instruction and guidance. And, and, and he says, he'll be faithful. He'll show us, he'll tell us mm-hmm. and, and then, and he'll deploy us into those situations. Absolutely. So, yeah, so, I think it's a really cool, what you're on, what you're talking about, that false humility or that pride, you know, that's kind of the, the spectrum of yeah. the two. Of, of how do you wield your glory? How do you, and, and you know who gave it to you, you know where it came from. And, and I think, you know, just a good, a good thank you is, is really the best, the best answer when, when somebody recognizes you for what God's given you and entrusted to you. I think that's a great way to handle that is, yeah, I, thank you. God and I have been working on that, and I'm so glad that was helpful. Yeah, I like to so, celebrate it. I was a, I dropped every, amen. I dropped every class in college where I had to do an oral presentation. And about two months after I really surrendered my life to Christ, he called me into ministry, and we really battled over the speaking part because I was like, heck no, it ain't going to happen. And so now, fast forward 25 years, you know, this year we get a keynote speak at Iron Sharpens Iron in Albany, keynote, yeah. uh, Iron Sharpens Iron in Jacksonville. And I just laugh, and people will come up, and you know, there's always somebody who's going to give you a compliment. So I always take that with a grain of salt. But I just laugh and I go, yeah, that was pretty cool, huh? Because I'm thinking sometimes I'm up there speaking, and I can feel the Holy Spirit speaking through me and giving me ideas and thoughts and concepts and yeah. passion and realizing there's no way that Jim Ramos, Jim Ramos is not this good. And so just to say thank you, God, for the partnership. Number seven in your Warrior Basic Training School is, and I thought this was a beautifully obvious, uh, it, love is the is number seven, but I love what you said. You said love is the family business in the kingdom. Do you want to elaborate? Yeah. You know, back to love is what we're made for. Love is the greatest thing. Uh, love is what God is, according to First John. You know, God is love. And he's, he's loving us and entrusting us to love others back to life. I think he wants to partner with us in this, in this family business. Jesus was notorious at loving. And, and, and not everything he said was kind. Correct. But everything he said was loving. You know, he confronted some people pretty seriously and had some pretty challenging words for some in the story. So, uh, you know, loving life and love, love and life, those are just huge. And and that's what the kingdom life is about. That's the family business. Yeah. I appreciate that. Well, I want to, we're like five minutes left. We're getting against the edge here. And I really want to cover a couple things here, but I want to move into the section of your book. You call it advanced training. And that resonated me because I thought, oh, basic training, you know, that's cool, but, you know, give me some Navy SEAL stuff, right? Uh, and so you got into advanced training, and that really hurt. It was kind of painful. And and I know you listed, I think you listed a couple things in here, but two really stood out to me. And you didn't number them like what they are. You just kind of listed them. So I was like, well, what is yeah. what? But I walked away with your first two being, these are huge. And you you talked about these men who mastered the Bible. These uh, Last night at my group uh, with my millennial men, we talked about, you know, what does stand firm in the faith mean when guys have been in ministry 30, 40, 50 years or falling off the deep end? Right. And, and it came down to these two things. And I think these are, they're in your book. And I thought this is really resonating with me because I think this is advanced training. When I think of advanced training, I think of not being better, but being better right. longer. And so the right. two, the, so I just want you to speak to, and here's, here's one of the things that you said in your book, you wrote, quote, and I'm not talking about immoral behaviors. That's starting way too far downstream. So I want, I love that. And you continued, you said, I'm talking about compromised thoughts where the real battle is in the warriors fighting 
and the warrior's yeah. fighting must begin. So the two things that you talked about in your advanced training are being uncompromising and advancing. So do you want to unpack yeah. those? Yeah. Those are huge. The, yeah. The, the belief. So what we were after in, in that, in the first one about compromised and, and sin and behavior so the sin piece, if, if you're looking at sin and trying not to sin, that's sin management. So if, if sin isn't the, isn't the issue, what is? We believe that you've got to go farther upstream to what's causing me to believe that a woman on a screen has something for me more than the woman at home. Mm-hmm. And it, it's not just Pavlov's dog, it's not, but, but there's, some, there's something happening deeper in a system of how, how our heart works and advancing is, is becoming a little more special ops. You are, you are far more interested in what is, what is it that I'm believing that this holds for me? That's going to satisfy some part of my heart that like it's Romans seven, I can't do what I want to do. Yes. And, and, and what I'm doing, I don't want to do. So who will deliver me from this? So going upstream and finding out what is it that I've believed about myself, about God, or about others, what kind of inventory can I take that sin is actually showing me that there's something compromised in me? And it's, a, it's some, somewhere in there is a belief attached to, the, you know, you talked about something to hide, something to prove, something to fear. That's mm-hmm. an oriented man has nothing to hide, nothing to prove, yeah. nothing to fear. Well, a compromised man or a disoriented man is has something when fear or hiding or shame or guilt or or an offer a compromised promise you know that that our sexuality can be sent in another direction that the enemy is compromised what is it that's going on in my system and like for example i just remember where god took me was um i believed in junior high like a lot of boys do and by the time i was in high school i was practicing this to some degree that if you pay for the dinner and the movie, she'll pay you back. <laughs> you too? I never thought that way. Dale's gone, me too. <laughs> so that's a belief. Yeah, understood. And so that needs not just confession and repentance. It needs understanding. It needs it needs breaking that agreement. And, and confession and, and, and repentance is yeah. that unsubscribing way. And then you have to start practicing differently because the enemy is going to come calling and, and try to bring that up again. And that, how do you, how do you start to practice the new way? That's what I mean. You're going to have to, since you haven't been fighting that battle for a long time, you've been falling and falling and maybe you get 30 days, maybe you get 60 days, maybe you get a run yeah. of, of uh, not doing it, whatever <laughs> mm-hmm. it is. But um, yeah, I mean, those, these are some real subtleties when guys exaggerate or they don't offer. What is it? You know, you're getting into some deeper water of, of of what sin might look like and be. Yeah. When you when you're afraid, or when you're trying to prove. I mean, those look two different things. And so upstream is typically some files and some some ingredients that you can look at if if you're willing to go there. I've seen Jesus show men all kinds of things that where the pollutant is actually coming from that that the behavior then results in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's an idea, it's a belief, it's an attitude, it's a perspective that's upstream. That's where you want to do the work, not in the doing and don't doing. The sin is is a little bit too late. It's it's what are you believing? Yeah. That that has that that's false and and that's running and almost running you in an autopilot way. So that's uh, that's how some of this looks and that's why you know, beliefs and, and, and compromised and uncompromised were some of that advanced training, seeing that kind of stuff and doing the work with God to take back lost ground, you know, to bring that back into alignment with God. Well, and whenever I have something to prove, something to fear and something to hide, uh, John Elders calls that being a poser. You said oh, putting, putting on the mask or the yeah. false self or, self, or Paul addressed it as the flesh. And so when right. I have those moments where I'm like, whoa, whoa, why am I bragging? Whoa, 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 why am I hiding that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. What, what am I afraid of? I have to go back and go, okay, it's time to, I'm going to use your illustration, journey upstream. To me, that's, I know upstream, you're talking about my past, but to me, upstream is pushing 
against the current into the deeper yep. waters. I'm going to advance when everybody else is drifting, and I'm going to I'm going to continue to rise into the best version of myself in Christ, even though the currents yep. of life are pushing me downstream. And so this is some deep water stuff, man. So I really do yeah. appreciate, I do yeah. appreciate that, man. And we are, we are out of time. <laughs> uh, it's really fun getting these conversations. I, I hopefully yeah. uh, I can get over to the North Carolina area sometime if I'm ever in Durham. I'll give you a call and we'll have a real, we, yeah, a real we want you co- cup Come of on. coffee. So um, anyway, I sure appreciate that. Again, you guys, you can look, you can look at is it Zoe dot org. Zoe.org, Z-O-W-E-H.org. Pr- pronounced, I always called it Zoe, but I also said St. Yeah. Irenaeus. I don't know if I can say St. <laughs> Irenaeus consistently yeah. without failing. I'll just probably stick to my Americanized I think version. That, I think there's, a, there's, still a feud, there's still a feud about that name. It's, I've heard oh, it really? both ways in, in all kinds of places. Well, I like yeah, the way I you say really. it better. It sounds more yeah. uh, old school. <laughs> old school theology. <laughs> I love it. Hey, uh, thanks. Sure I got it right. <laughs> well, hey, Michael, thanks so much for coming on our show, man, and taking your time you to share your great. wisdom. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you being on. Yeah. Thanks for what you're doing for the hearts of men. These, these are big conversations, and I hope more and more men will uh, will circle up and uh, and see this, see what you guys are doing, what you're offering. And and yeah, they they can do this. That's what we want them to know, right? You, you can do this. Well, and, and, and it's really God, fun. Yeah. God's inviting you to do. He's going to equip you. He's going to provide. He's going to bring friends. He's going to, he's going to, you can do this. And, and alignment, you know, shouldering up in that direction is really, really what your first steps, first things first. And, and wanting that hungry, being hungry. I hope this, I hope this creates a little bit of hunger for some men. And, uh, because this can be done. This can be done. He wouldn't, he wouldn't ask us to do something that we couldn't do. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us and the life of more by visiting Zoe on Uversion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, With God, there is always more, and you were made for more.